Okay, here's our re uh, beginning of our review for the midterm, starting at uh, chapter zero. It's kind of a review uh, chapter. So let's start really quick. Here we go. Number one, uh, we're doing this conversion. And if I give you problems like this, I'll definitely give you the chart. You won't have to memorize these. Uh, so let's start with number one. It says 21 feet. This is how I would start it out. I would go 21 feet. I always put that over one. And then we're going to convert it into yards. So what I'm going to do is multiply it by a thing called a unit multiplier. I'm changing it to feet. I'm changing feet to yards. So I want to cancel out the feet. So if I have feet on top, I'm going to put feet on the bottom. I'm going to put yards on the top. That way, when I multiply them together, the feet will cancel out. I'll be left with yards. And that's what I'm trying to solve for right there. I'm trying to change it from feet to yards. So we have to figure out how many yards equals how many feet, or how many feet equal how many yards. So you come over to our little chart right here, and let's see, right there, one yard, I know it's a little small, uh, but one yard equals three feet. Okay, that's what we're going to use. So one yard equals three feet. So watch, the feet cancel out, and you just go 21, or let's say you got three goes into 21 seven times, and so that would just be seven yards. So seven yards equals 21 feet. All right the idea. Let's try number two. It's 180 grams. Put that over one. Always start with that. Then I multiply it by a unit multiplier. So I put a little division sign here. And I'm converting it to kilograms right there. So I want to get rid of grams. So if grams is on top, I put grams on the bottom and I change it to kilograms. So I got to figure out how many grams equals how many kilograms. So if you look at the bottom right here on this chart, one kilogram equals a thousand grams. So I put a one with the kilogram and a thousand with the grams. Look what happens. Grams cancel out. That's why I put the grams on the bottom. And then we're going to be left with kilograms. So what's this say I do? I go 180 divided by a thousand. You could put that in a calculator, I guess, if you wanted to. But um, dividing by a thousand is just moving the decimal place to the left three places because I've got three zeros right here. So the decimal would be right here at 180. So I move it one, two, three places to the left, which gives me 0.18. And that would be kilograms. Let's do number three. These are all kind of the same, so I'll go a little bit quick here. So it's 35 yards. Put that over one. And I'm converting it to meters. So I put a little unit multiplier thing. Um, and I believe, let me look at my little list right here. Uh, yeah, we actually have one. One yard, e there's another way to do it, but since you got this chart, just use this. One yard equals 0.9 meters. So I'm converting it from yards right here yards to meters. So I get rid of yards, so I put that on the bottom. So whatever unit is on the top, I put the same unit on the bottom, that way they'll cancel each other out. And I'm going to convert it to meters. Now look at it, it says one yard equals 0.9 meters. So the 0.9 goes with the meters, and the 1 goes with the yards. Alright, I always like to do this, the yards cancels out with the yards. So what am I doing now? I'm not doing any division like I did here and here. Both of these are on top, and I'm multiplying them together. So I go 35 times 0.9, and that comes out to 31.5. Use your calculator for that. And then look at your units. Your units, you canceled out the yards, so your units are meters. So you put meters, 31.5 meters. All right. Hope you're getting the hang of it now. Number four, 5.1 liters. 5.1 they put capital L. A lot of times I'll put a lowercase l for liters, but in this particular problem, they write it with a capital L. And we're changing that to quarts. All right. So from liters to quarts. So if liters is on the top, fourth time now, should be getting the hang of this. You put liters on the bottom. And we're changing it to quarts. So quarts will go on the top. So you come over here and you look to see, do you have liters and quarts together? Sure you do. you got right there. One quart equals 0.9 liters. I know it looks, I don't know how small it looks to you, but when I'm looking at it, it looks pretty small. Um, but you could always um, go to your original quiz. We called it a quiz. You can do original quiz and look at the chart. You should be able to see it a little bit better. So one quart equals 0.9 liters. So what do you do? One quart, so put a one here, 0.9 liters. You put the 0.9 with the liters. Liters cancel out. Now this is the division again. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in my calculator. 5.1, it's on the bottom, so you're dividing 5.1 divided by 0.9, and that comes out to about 5.7. And you canceled out the liters, you're left with quarts, so you put that as your units, 5.7 quarts. Okay. Okay, I made this a little bit bigger so I could see it a little bit better better myself. So let's um, we're changing paces here. This is getting into some more algebra kind of stuff. Even though before what we were doing was kind of algebra, but this is more like we're used to. So what we're going to do is evaluate. It tells you what R is equal to, Q, and W. So we're going to take these. We're going to replace them, or we're going to substitute is the word we use into these letters right here. And let's just do what's going on. If you look at this, I'm going to rewrite it. So I've got five W over 3r plus q and they tell you what everything is equal to look they tell you what w is it's negative 2 so what I'm gonna do this 5 is being multiplied by w so I go 5 times whenever I have a letter right here I'm gonna put a parenthesis and put that number in where that parenthesis is so w is negative 2 so I put a negative 2 right here it's 5 times negative 2 we'll do that math just in a second Let's figure out this stuff. Now on the bottom, I got the same thing. 3 times r. So it's 3 times r. Now you come up here, you see what r is equal to. It's equal to 3, so we put a 3 right here. But then you got a little bit more to it. You got a plus q. So I put a plus here, and then I put whatever q is. q is 1, so I put a 1 here. Let's do the top now. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10 over. Now you do the multiplication first before you do the addition. Remember, it's please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses first, then exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. And that's the order you have to do. You do multiplication before you do addition. So I multiply these together. That's 9, and then I add the 1. So I've got negative 10 over 9 plus 1 is 10, and that reduces. Don't leave it like that. Reduce it all the way, simplify it, and you get negative 1. And there's your answer, just like that. All right, let's jump to number six. Number six, you got something a little bit different in here. You've got an absolute value. The absolute value means you do what's in the absolute value first, and then whatever answer you get for that, whether it's positive or negative, it always comes out positive. So do your arithmetic first, and then whatever you get for that, that should come out to be a positive number. So let's do this. It's going to be eight plus but the absolute value symbol, those two bars, means absolute value. Now we go q minus 5. Look up here. What was q equal to? It was equal to 1. So I go 1 minus 5. Put it, close up the uh, absolute value. It kind of acts like a parenthesis right here. And then, um, yeah, that's it. That's what we, we got to figure out. So look what we have. We still got that 8. We haven't messed with that yet. I'll just keep the 8 right there. Now we got to figure out what this is. It's in absolute value, so I'll keep the absolute value symbol. 1 minus 5. Well, 1 minus 5 is negative 4, but it's inside the absolute value. So it's going to be 8 plus, remember what we do with absolute value, whatever we get inside there, it always becomes positive. So instead of plus negative 4, the absolute value of negative 4 is just going to be 8 plus 4. And 8 plus 4 is just regular positive 12. There you go. That's how you work with absolute value. You do it first. Okay. Don't change everything in there to positive, because if you did, it would be 1 plus 5, which is 6, and it wouldn't be the right answer. So you do the work what's, uh, that's inside the absolute value first. Then you take a look at that answer right here, and you just take that, and you turn that into a positive. See? It's plus positive 4. Add them up, and you get 12. All right. Let's keep going. Number 7. It's three-fifths, I'm going to write this down because I want to do a little work with this. It's going to be three-fifths b equals negative two. This three-fifths is being multiplied by the b. Now here's the rule for algebra. If I want to get rid of this three-fifths and it's being multiplied, a lot of people say, oh yeah, you divide. You always divide if um, you always do the opposite. The opposite of multiplication is division. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply by 5 thirds. Why would I do that? Because look, when I multiply by 5 thirds, the 5 cancels out with this 5, and the 3 cancels out with this 3. And then you've gotten rid of that 3 fifths. That was the whole idea, is to get rid of that 3 fifths. Now remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So we're going to do the same thing to this side. I'm going to multiply that by 5 thirds. 
Watch, since I'm multiplying by a fraction, I'm going to put that over 1. I don't know, it just makes it look a little nicer, fraction times fraction. Look what happened here. We talked about it, but now we can mark them out. Those go. All right, so I've got B equals, and now we just figure out what this is. I always look to see if anything cancels out. And in this case, it doesn't. 3 does not go into 5. 3 does not go into negative 2. So we just multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. In fact, I can just do that right here. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Over 1 times 3 is 3. And I just leave it like that. There's no reason to change that into a uh, improper or a, a mixed number. Keep it improper is what I meant to say. All right. Oops. Let's get rid of this. And this. Okay. All right. So there you go. You've got uh, you've got your answer. Just keep it like this. Don't throw it into a calculator. Get a decimal. It just takes up too much time. And um, who knows? You might punch in wrong numbers in a calculator to get the wrong answer. Just keep it like this. It's perfectly fine. Just like this. All right. Let's go to the graphs. I'll get rid of this stuff, and then we'll uh, take a look at the graphs. All right. Let's do a little graphing. This is pretty easy graphing, I think. Uh, let's take a look and. Um, see how to write their answers. It says graph and label the point negative 2, negative 4 on a coordinate plane. Well this is what they're talking about as far as a coordinate plane. This is the x-axis, the y-axis. We just plot the point negative 2, negative 4. Remember you will always go in the x direction first and then you go in the y direction. All right, That's what we're talking about. This is the x direction and that's the y direction. We start here at the origin. It's negative 2, negative 4. That means we go to the left on the x-axis negative 2, 1, 2. Then we go on the y-axis, negative 4, which means we go down, 1, 2, 3, 4. Plot the point right here. Now, that's graphing it. Okay, we got to label it as well. Label it, um, I'm going to put point R. All right, that labels it, and let's say exactly where it is. That's at negative 2, negative 4. That's it. That's labeled. It's graphed because it's in the right spot and then it's labeled it's point R and we even told where it's located at negative 2, negative 4. Alright, let's do kind of the same thing with this. Let's get rid of this stuff like we're done with that. Let's get rid of this. And let's do the same thing with this one. It says graph the triangle with vertices. So we're going to do the same thing where we're doing three of them here. It's 1, negative 4, so that means we go to the right 1 and we go down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. And then k is 2, 3, so we go to the right 2, 1, 2, and we go up 3, 1, 2, 3. And then l is negative 1, 2, so we go to the left 1, and we go up 2. Now it says graph the triangle. So don't just graph those points, actually connect them. All right, just like that, and just like that. And there it is. Tell you what, let's label it. Um, let's see, 1, negative 4 down here, that would be J. And then this is the negative 1, 2, that would be L. And then, of course, this was 2, 3, and that would be K. And there it is. That's done. That's kind of what I'm, I'll be looking for if I give you a problem like this. All right, well, that's Chapter 0. That wasn't so bad, I don't think. I hope it, hope it helped you out. I hope it helped you out. Um, it's been a while since we've done this stuff. So um, go back and look, and um, you might see a couple of these on the uh, midterm. Not all of them, but maybe a few of them. All right, good luck with this.